Hey guys, welcome to 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And here's what I need you to do. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel to stay up to date to everything we're doing here on 3 and Out and the Volume. Uh, what did Herm Edwards once famously say? You play to win the game. Uh, listen, I, I think sometimes the amount of people going for it around the league with average quarterbacks and shitty offenses drives me nuts. Kick field goals in certain situations. But when you have a top five quarterback in the league, and that's what Josh Allen is right now, you have easily one of the best offensive coordinators in Brian Dayball. You put the pedal to the metal, and you go for the kill shot. And Sean McDermott, Josh Allen, Brian Dayball, it did not work, but I love the decision. You go for the win. You play to win the game, as, as Herm would say. I think he's still saying it down at Arizona State. Might need to say it a little louder after they just got boat raced by Utah. But listen, it doesn't always work out, but that was the right call. That's what you do. You have a championship-level mindset. You're trying to get over the hump. You're trying to win the AFC. A team like the Tennessee Titans, you're going to see potentially again. Uh, so, you know, those are the type teams you play in January. You don't play to tie and go to overtime. And Vrabel's done that a couple times. He's kicked field goals late in games, and he's won an over- he won an overtime game, and he lost another one. That's what you do when you have the, when you have the Jimmys and the Joes. And listen, in that play, fourth and one, you just run it up the gut. I like the play call. It just didn't work. He slipped. You know, Simmons got got penetration up the middle. But I applaud Sean McDermott, who, a defensive coach. You know, typically defensive coaches sometimes can be more conservative. I.E. Vrabel in that situation. But I, I like Sean McDermott's understanding, coming into his own as really a big-time head coach. He's got a great team. Uh, you know, road game, you go for the kill shot. And my favorite position, I remember hearing this from uh, Keith Williams, who's now on the Baltimore Ravens staff, best, one of the best position coaches I've ever been around, best wide receiver coach I've ever been around. He's Devontae Adams' guy, trains Tyree Kill in the offseason, now working with all the Ravens guys. I think we, we had a bunch of wide receivers, a couple of them played in the NFL, and Ryan Matthews was on our team at the time, and he was one of the best running backs in the country. And I remember Keith saying, and he, this guy loves wide receivers more than any human alive. <laughs> more than Jerry Rice. More than my, This guy eats, breathes, and sleeves wide receivers. Sleeps wide receivers. And he's like, my favorite position is running backs. He's like, it's easily, it encompasses the most, right? You got to run inside. You got to run outside. You have to block, and you have to catch. So you have to be tough. You have to be physical. You have to be skilled. You have to be just, you got to be the total package. It, it, it's really like, it's like being a star middle linebacker. There's nothing you can't do to be that good. And listen, you know, probably the best running back of my adult life is LaDainian Tomlinson. I vividly remember Barry Sanders, but his teams were so bad. Emmett was really good, but I, I, I would say Barry and, and LT were better. I, Walter Payton, I've just seen clips as before my time. Jim Brown kind of is like Babe Ruthian when it comes to football, obviously way before I was born. But what we're seeing out of Derrick Henry is just, this is an all-time great player. It, it's just unlike, especially in this modern day, when all the uh, analytical elites try to shit on running backs and say they have no value, Derrick Henry is changing the game. He's, he's What's he on pace for? Probably another 2,000 yards. And he's unstoppable. And the thing that makes a great running back, whether it's 1975 or 2021 on Monday Night Football, when every single human being, 70,000 people, both coaching staffs, and every player on defense knows who's getting the ball. We are going to give the ball to Derrick Henry. And there is nothing you can do. And you know the best part about running in a zone scheme? You know, like... A, a musician, a painter, uh, anyone that's creative, there, there's an element of just artistry, right? You get to be, just do your own thing. It's kind of instincts of whatever your craft is. And when you run in a power scheme, and that's typically like when you pull the guards, when you lead up with a fullback, the hole is designated. It's either behind the guard, behind the tackle. In a zone scheme, what Derrick Henry has thrived in 
it's really kind of just, Derek, you pick the hole. You pick the lane and just let it rip. You can cut back. You can go back through the center. You can go back through the guard. You can go outside the tackle. Wherever you see a little daylight, you feel it out. Like, there is there really much coaching what Derrick Henry is doing? And I, I said this a while back when he had the uh, sweet run against Seattle. What makes Derrick Henry so special is not that he's one of the biggest human beings we've ever seen at the position. It's his size. When you see a guy as big as him, and I went to Titans practice two or three years ago when I was in Nashville and went to OTAs, and he is massive. But what makes him so great is he's got incredible feet. He has incredible instincts through the hole. His ability to set defenders up, his spatial awareness is incredible. And then his top-end speed, because top-end speed for running backs is overrated. It is not a necessary attribute to be a great running back. But when you have it with all the other skills he possesses, you're unstoppable. And you saw tonight his patience, then his instincts, his feet, and then his top-end speed, he's an unstoppable force. And like I said, every single human in the stadium, on the field, and sitting on their couches watching that game goes, Derrick Henry's getting this ball. And every single time, he ends up scoring, and he ends up producing. It's, I, I've never seen anything quite like it. I have nothing but, he's, I mean, running back is my favorite position because of the way, once upon a time, my guy Keith described it, and I've always thought about that since, and I have so much respect. It is so hard. You're getting hit on every play. The violence that position encompasses for a skill position, like wide receivers, you know, it's not the same. And, and when we see A.J. Brown and Stephon Diggs, how talented these guys are, but their bodies, you know, they're not taking the constant pounding. And Derrick Henry is just, everyone, like by this year, everyone knows he's getting the ball in every single game. 150, 180, 130, 190. It's like this, how does he do it? And it's cool to be a witness of this all-time great player, which let's face it, when he was coming out, I don't think most of us ever thought this guy would be this good. And then his career took a little while to get going. Then Arthur Smith, and I got to give Todd Downing, he's doing a good job. Now, if you call offense for the Titans, it's a pretty easy strategy. Hand it to 22, throw it to 2, throw it to 11. Hand it to 22, hand it to 22, throw it to 11. I mean, it's just, I, I, I might be able to function as the offensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans. And then, listen, we have given Mahomes so much credit, and he's earned every bit of it. We call him like the modern-day Favre. And he is one of the most remarkable athletes. I'd say, if you're listening to this, you probably agree, most of us have ever seen. He is a very, very fun player to watch. And we, we, we basically said, like, this guy's going to be an all-time great player, and he's headed that way. And he, I mean, he already is. But, like, Josh Allen, he has a very similar game. Like, to me, that play he made on third down that when he jo- dove for the first down, like, that was Farvian. He made a throw earlier in the game, rolling to his right, like Mahomes and like Favre, they are so physically gifted that they make impossible things look easy. He rolled out at the 40-yard line, and he threw a ball to Cole Beasley, who was like five or six yards back in the end zone. So that's 45 yards. He threw the ball on a rope, and it got there in like two seconds. Now, most players, even guys like good players, like Cousins is playing well, Dak's playing well, Like, I don't know if they could do that that easily. They'd have to probably set their feet, stop, and throw it. Mahomes could do that. Herbert could do that. But it's on a short list of guys that could do that and make it look so easy. And then you see just, I don't want to say reckless, but how quick he is to do whatever it takes to get the extra yard. It's easy to see why he's a star quarterback. And he's a guy, and I saw Colin tweet this out. It's pretty nuts that this guy ended up at Wyoming. And I texted with, a guy that's a recruiting coordinator for a Power 5 school. And he's like, I don't think people realize he grew a lot in junior college. When he was coming out of high school, he was 6'1". Look at him now, he looks like 6'5". So he grew in junior college. The other thing, when he was at JC, he was like 48% completion percentage. So he was a very, very inaccurate thrower. His growth and improvement as a player might be unprecedented. He went from the biggest project in NFL history to becoming an absolute superstar player. And you know the cool part about the NFL? Two best players on the field tonight, Josh Allen, Derrick Henry. 
One guy goes to Alabama in the peak of their powers, wins the Heisman Trophy, helps win a national championship. The other guy is from a town you've never heard of, has to go to Bakersfield Junior College, ends up at Wyoming. And they're both superstars now. They're both max players and two, I mean, Henry is the best running back. Josh, a top five quarterback. But it just shows you, it's, you know, one guy starts here, the other guy starts there. It's this great mix of all these players that come from different places, right? And you just think about that game. That game was awesome. And the reason that game was awesome is because the sweet players, Diggs, Allen, A.J. Brown, Tannehill, Julio Jones before he got hurt, Derrick Henry, they're all making plays. That felt like the pro bowlers in that game were bringing it. And Nashville was bringing it. That was awesome. That was fun. That is the NFL. Thanks for watching 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And make sure you subscribe right now to the Volumes YouTube channel.